ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين به ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى واحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد the the story began long 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 time ago when allah azza wa jal decided to create mankind and allah azza wa jal informed the angels that he subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to create adam and for a reason they were asking that why do you want to create mankind and we would know what they will be doing Allah Azza wa Jal answered them directly that I know what you don't know it ends there with the angels they are always obeying Allah Azza wa Jal and Allah Azza wa Jal created Adam from clay but yet there is no soul in Adam just a creation from clay among the angels was Iblis he is from al jinn but because of his knowledge he was elevated to be among the angels who are worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal continuously and he started looking at that creation wondering what is it but from the beginning he did not like that creation then Allah Azza wa Jal breathed into Adam and the soul was into Adam and Adam started moving and Allah Azza wa Jal said to the angels and everyone who was present just imagine that scene Allah Azza wa Jal the one who created the heavens and earth the supreme and all the angels including Iblis were sitting and listening to the orders coming from Allah Azza wa Jal directly to them فَإِذَا نَفَخْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِي فَقَعُوا لَهُ سَاجِدِينَ And when I breathe into him, bow down. Make the prostration to Adam. Everybody obeyed Allah Azza wa Jal and made the sujood. All of them except one standing disobeying Allah Azza wa Jal in front of Allah Azza wa Jal but look at the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal sometimes we human we cannot tolerate each other let's learn from our creator 
Allah Azza wa Jal could immediately just punish Iblis and everything is going to be vanished. But Allah Azza wa Jal asked him, what have stopped you? What prevented you from obeying me and bowing down to Adam? Then with total rudeness and arrogance and ignorance, Iblis said to Allah Azza wa Jal, I will not bow down for him. I am better than him. You created me from fire and you created him from clay. How can I make sujood for him? I mean, I mean, you just can't imagine something like that is going to happen. And Allah Azza wa Jal is still listening to the statement of Iblis. Then Allah Azza wa Jal said, then you are out of my mercy. Did Iblis ask for forgiveness? Oh, please forgive me Allah, I will not do it again. No, still continuing with his arrogance because of envy. He has that status and he wants to maintain that status only for him. Did not ask for forgiveness. What he asked for is for a chance, a period of time. Give me that time. Give me that time until the day of judgment. And I will misguide each one of them. Allah Azza wa Jal gave him that request. Imagine if you are disagreeing with one of your colleagues and he is shouting at you and then he is telling you, give me the chance, give me a few days, I will prepare for you. This is what Iblis was saying, give me the chance and I will misguide each one of them. And Allah Azza wa Jal gave him that chance. Whoever is going to follow you is going to be with you in hellfire. And whoever is disobeying you and following my guidance is going to heavens. And that enmity started from that day. We did not choose that. We have no chance to say, please, I have nothing to do with you. You have nothing to do with me. It doesn't work. The moment the soul is in our body, that enmity started. He is an enemy to you and me. And Allah Azza wa Jal said that to us, إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌ He is your true enemy. Then what shall we do? فَاتَّخِذُوهُ عَدُوًا So take him, consider him as your enemy and be prepared for him. So the moment we came to this life, this battle between us and Iblis started. We cannot say we don't want that fight. That is not an option. The only two options that we have, only two, not three, only two. You have two options to consider. Either that you follow Iblis and live your life and face the consequences. Or you take him as your enemy and be prepared for that battle and seek the help from Allah Azza wa Jal to be protected in the hereafter. Obviously, the right choice is to seek the help from Allah Azza wa Jal 
and to take a place as our enemy. How do we do that? I don't want to follow a place and I want to have the protection and I want to be prepared for that battle. You cannot go into a battle without preparing for it. Number one is following the guidance of Allah Azza wa Jal and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Whatever is in the book of Allah Azza wa Jal and in the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, follow it without questioning. Number two, stick with the right group. Be with the right group. Choose the right friends. Choose the right group that will help you and remind you with Allah Azza wa Jal. It's not being with those who makes you laugh or make you enjoy your time, but support the police in misguiding you. Be with the right group. The wolf will only attack the lone sheep. If you are with the right group, you will be always reminded whether you be with them in the masjid or outside the masjid. Number three is seeking refuge in Allah Azza wa Jal. We cannot do it by our own. We must seek the help from Allah Azza wa Jal and seek refuge in Allah Azza wa Jal. Always seek refuge in Allah Azza wa Jal. We are reminded to do that when we recite the Quran so, so the Iblis will not uh, uh, take us and deviate us from remembering Allah Azza wa Jal. Always, always seek refuge in Allah Azza wa Jal. Fourth, Allah Azza wa Jal gave us a very powerful weapon to defeat Iblis and that is remembering Allah Azza wa Jal continuously. When you wake up, you always remember Allah Azza wa Jal and say the dua. Alhamdulillah alladhi ahyani. All praise to Allah Azza wa Jal that gave me the chance to be alive again. When you go out from your house, you always say, Bismillah, tawakkaltu ala Allah, wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. You are protected. When you say, la ilaha illa Allah, wahdahu la sharika lah, lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-hamd, wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir. Hundreds times a day, you are protected. When you have trying to take your meal and you remember Allah Azza wa Jalla and say Bismillah, then you are protected. When you say the adhkar of the day and night, you are protected. A very, very, very small action that will not take from us three minutes. It will not take more than three minutes. But we do not do it. When you finish prayer, sit and say Subhanallah 33 times. Alhamdulillah 33 times. Allahu Akbar 33 times. Great reward you will have. When you go to bed, you remember Allah Azza wa Jal. And you say Bismillah. Bismik Allahumma wada'tu jambi. Wabika arfa'a. فَإِنْ أَمْسَكْتَ نَفْسِي فَرْحَمْهَا وَإِنْ أَرْسَلْتَهَا فَحْفَظْهَا بِمَا تَحْفَظْ بِهِ عِبَادِكَ الصَّالِحُونَ You remember Allah Azza wa Jal, your tongue will be always remembering Allah Azza wa Jal. Where would be the chance for a please to penetrate you? There will be no chance. Let us stick with the right group and be on the right path following the guidance of Allah Azza wa Jal and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Let us seek refuge in Allah Azza wa Jal 
and let us always remember Allah Azza wa Jal so we will be protected in this life to get the great reward in the hereafter. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. The last weapon that you can use to defeat Iblis is the istighfar. Iblis said to Allah Azza wa Jal, By you I will misguide them as long as their soul is in their body. And Allah Azza wa Jal said to him, I will continue forgiving them as long as they seek forgiveness from me. Always, always, always seek forgiveness. The Prophet وسلم, said, I seek forgiveness from Allah a hundred times a day. This is the Prophet وسلم. What about us? Seek forgiveness always. When you finish the prayer, we say, Stuck for Allah, stuck for Allah, stuck for Allah. We seek forgiveness because we are not sure was our prayer complete or not. We seek forgiveness. Iblis will do his best to stop you from asking for forgiveness because he knows that if you ask for forgiveness, you are going to be forgiven. But we don't know. Sometimes we just don't know and we don't care. Iblis will come to you even no matter what sort of sins you have committed. And you want to seek forgiveness and the Iblis will come to you and say, what are you talking about? You want to seek forgiveness? Have you forgotten what you have done? Are you playing with God? Do you think Allah will forgive you? Just forget it. And you decide and you will decide to follow what Iblis have told you to do so. But always, always seek forgiveness no matter what you have done. The Prophet وسلم, mentioned about one individual who have committed a sin. And then he remembered that he has a Lord who will forgive. And he said, Oh Allah, forgive my sins. Allah Azza wa Jal will say, My servant remembered that he has a Lord who forgives sins and I shall forgive him. Then that servant will do the sin again and will commit the same sin again. And then he will say, Oh Allah, please forgive me because I have done that sin again. Then Allah Azza wa Jal will say, My servant remembered that he has a Lord who forgives sins and he asked for my forgiveness and I shall forgive him. And that servant will do that sin for the third time again. And he will say, Oh Allah, I have done that sin again. Please forgive me. Sometimes if one of our kids will commit the sin for the second time, we will punish him and we will not forgive him. But look to Allah Azza wa Jal. The servant will say, Oh Allah, I have committed the sin again. And Allah Azza wa Jal will say, My servant remembered that he has a Lord who forgives sins and I shall forgive him, my servant. Do whatever you want. I have forgiven you. This is our Lord, Allah Azza wa Jal. Created us, protected us, have forgiven us, is merciful with us. We live 24 hours by the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. Yet we disobey Him. 
always always remember to for ask forgiveness from Allah Azza wa Jal. May Allah Azza wa Jal forgive all of our sins and guide us to the right path and enable us to follow the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so we will meet our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the hereafter with his companions. Allahumma Azza al Islam wa Muslimin wa Adil al Shirk wa Mushrikeen Adaak Ada al Din. Allahumma Akfir al Muslimin wa Muslimat wa Muminin wa Muminat al Ahya imin hum wa Amwat in Nakasamir. قريب مجيب للدعوات عباد الله إن الله أمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة